today on my channel i am going to be sharing with you guys some of the reasons why i think and i believe marriages don't last these days it doesn't matter if it's abroad if it's in africa that is my own perception all right instead of going all in at once i'm going to break the video into two all right because i don't want to make it too long and boring for you guys so there is going to be part one and there is going to be part two so number one for me is this thing that they call social media social media is more of a curse than a blessing according to me and what i mean by that is this before back then our mothers and fathers our grandparents and great grandfathers they had to wait for a trigger of jealousy to come to their home for them to see it and for them to get jealous and what I mean by that is this. In the past, even if your friend had a new car that her husband bought for her, or a new pair of shoe, or a new pair of jewelry, or a new handbag, you had to wait for her to come to your home for you to be able to even see it, for you to start jealousy. And most times, even when they used to come around, those friends used to come around, when they left your home, you knew that was it. Maybe you're going to throw a few tantrums here and there, but you end up forgetting about it. But now our days, this social media thing is more of a curse than a blessing. Nowadays, 3 a.m. in the morning, you're even sleeping in bed with your partner. Your partner is online seeing how her girlfriend, her man has bought her a new Birkin bag, has bought her a new car, has bought her a new Rolex watch and everything. And your wife, is in bed at night at 3 a.m. in the morning on her cell phone on TikTok, looking at all those things, and she's even staring at you in her sleep like this. Ah, this useless man. Hmm? The men that are doing that thing, do they have three heads? Look at him here. All he does is just eat snow. Go and work that his small job. And come on, he's telling me every time to be thinking, let's do they do, let's do they do. Eh? To buy somebody a small watch, you cannot buy me a watch and everything. Social media is destroying a lot of things. Like I said, in the past, our parents, grandparents, and great grandparents, they had to wait for triggers to come to their home before they could have a reason to get jealous. And even if they got jealous, it didn't last long because it was something of the moment. You will see it now and you just be like, ah. Then when the person leaves, you get busy again with your life, you know, and there's no social media for you to be looking at those things over and over again. So you basically forget about it. But nowadays, it's in your face. Today, you go to Nancy's profile. She's showing her own. Tomorrow, you go to Theodora's profile. She's showing her own. Tomorrow, you go to Daisy's profile. She's showing her own. And most times even, all of these things that you see on social media is fake life. Yeah, there are some people that work hard for everything. They offer themselves things. They are authentic and everything. But most times, especially for us women, there are a lot of women that you see online, oh my God, my boob, my days, oh my God, oh my God. When she clearly knows that she's the one that purchased that for herself, you are going to look at that, you're going to be jealous. Knowing, knowing that, that's your friend, that her boo that she's referring to. Something is lacking in her relationship. Maybe what you have, you at home, you have affection, you have love, your husband cares for you, he spends time with you. But her, it doesn't happen for her. Maybe it's just material stuff that she gets. Every time they give her money, but they don't treat her well. So the way that she's able to console herself, because when she sees you guys, your partner's all happy and everything, the only way that she feels that, okay, I can pepper them, I can ginger them, is to buy things for myself and post online. That is why they do it. That is why you have to be very, very self-content. Because being content in this life is the only thing that will help you not go insane. Is the only thing that will make you not lose your mind. Because when you're online, everything gets to you. You start telling your husband things like, eh, the men that are doing those things, do they have three heads? You shouldn't be saying that to your man. Especially if he's working hard. If he's working a good nine to five and everything, and maybe he's trying to figure out something else on the side, or maybe there's some men that even work nine to fives. They do Uber, they have side hustles and everything. But at the end of the day, they don't have money like all the other men. All fingers of their hands are not equal. We are all going to be having abundance and excess of something in our relationship and we are all going to be lacking in some areas. You cannot have everything. It's very rare. There are some people that have everything, but it's very rare. You cannot have love, money, affection, intimacy, everything in one relationship. No. 
something is missing something is always missing somewhere so there's some people that if they are missing in love they try to use material stuff to get to you that is why you need to be very very careful don't go and be telling your man eh, your mates out there they have three heads they have three heads you are shattering your man's ego and even if he had any plans for you and everything now he will start looking at you somehow and if you're somewhere that gets carried away by what you see online, no matter what your man gives you, you will never be satisfied. That is why self-contentment is very important to make marriage work. Because you see somebody, you behave with the person online, you don't know that journey. Like I see some people, you see a couple that has been married for 10, 18 years. You, you are just married. You want somebody that has been married for 18 years. You want whatever they have. To be happening in your relationship how is that possible they have gone through their own journey they have suffered like you they had hardships hard moments like you hard times like you they went through it and now they are where they are you are just at the beginning of your journey you already want to have the same lifestyle as them how is that possible sometimes when you start being envious think sometimes even you see a man nowadays he's giving his woman a lot of money you don't know where they come from they have been through their own journey. Maybe they have had hardships together. The girl has been there for him over the years and everything. And now he has made money. And that is why now he's blessing her. He's giving her everything that she wants. But you, you are new in a relationship with a man. The man don't even know you. You guy just came back from your honeymoon. He doesn't even know who you are financially. He doesn't even know if you're giving. He doesn't know if you're greedy. He doesn't know if you're caring. He doesn't know anything about you. But you want him to be giving you the same treatment as a woman that has been in marriage for 18 years. Come on. Be realistic and also there is something else i wanted to talk about and this thing mainly happens to women and i find it very annoying you know in this life you have to choose your battles like i said you can't have everything you will see somebody maybe in their marriage their hobby that they have in common is traveling you and your husband when you guys got married you guys, your hobby has always been going to restaurants, dining out, shopping, just doing basic stuff and everything. But you see a couple that likes traveling over the world and everything. All of a sudden now, oh, we never travel. Oh, you never take me to restaurants. Oh, you never take me shopping. Oh, you never buy me this. Oh, you never do that. Oh my God, it's so draining. You need to choose your battles. When you met your partner, you guys have some things in common. That is what you guys enjoy doing. When you guys were dating, your partner asked you, baby, what is your love language? He said, me, I like food. I like going to restaurants. I like staying home and watching movies on Friday nights. I like walking in the park and everything. Now, you guys have been together for a while. You end up getting married. That is what the man is giving you now. You are getting angry. No, we're not doing enough. Now you switch your love language now. We're not traveling enough. Why not partying enough? Why not clubbing enough? Why not shopping enough? When before you were telling him how I'm not so much into material stuff, I'm not so much into this. We men learn how to be self content because it can be so, so, so frustrating for men at times. So frustrating. I know there are a few men that are also like that, but the percentage is very low. Most men, the way they are, that's how they are. But women are always like this emotions, fluctuations. It can be so frustrating and like i said the number one reason why a lot of marriages are not lasting abroad is this social media thing you spend like 12 hours of your day on your phone you swipe up today this is when it's getting married and her dress is looking so beautiful you start saying how oh my dress was not even looking like this on my wedding day you didn't spend enough money on me you swipe here all this one by the car or you swipe here this one is in zanzibar or you swipe here and men they spend less time on their phone. If they're on their phone, maybe they're looking at one girl's booty and everything. They don't spend time looking at their body's pictures to be saying, oh, my friend, his wife bought him this shit and all that stuff. If you see a man online, he's looking at me, yeah, she's looking at us and everything. Looking at all these uh, small, small videos where they say, taga, taga. Maybe they say, girl, big breast, big ass. They say, taga. That's what men are interested at. And they don't even spend long time on it. It's just getting there. Maybe like, every five, five minutes and everything and they get out and they forget about their phones and so many women are not even on social media but us women we go there we're just looking for trouble 
We'll be spending hours and hours and hours on social media. And you even have some of these stupid people on social media giving some stupid advices. Me, if my husband cheats on me, I'm going to cheat on me too. Oh girl, me, I don't take shit. I don't take shit from no man and everything. I don't care if you call me a feminist. I don't care, you know. You women nowadays, you don't need a man. You don't need a man in your life. Everything a man can do, a woman can do better. You don't need a man. You'll be watching all these videos. I need to be very careful. You need to guard your heart in everything you do. So, try to avoid being online all the time, watching all these things. Over time, even if you say, I don't care, whatever seed is going to be planted in you from those videos is going to grow on you. It is going to grow on you and it's going to destroy your home. That is why you need to guard your heart at all times. Number two that I have for you guys is too much demands on a particular gender. And what I mean by that here is this, especially abroad here, back home, women have things a little bit more easier. Especially if your husband is fortunate enough to have a little bit of money, a good career. Back home, women are just well off. They can afford to have maids, family members come around to help them. When a woman gives birth, people come around to take care of the woman and everything. The mother comes around to take care of the woman, cook for her, stack the fridge with food, feed her, massage her with her water and everything to help her get back her energy, get back on her feet and everything. But abroad here, things are not easy for women. You go to the hospital with your husband. Only the two of you are in this thing. First of all, you carry the whole nine months. Only the two of you are in this. If your wife is emotional, it takes a toll on the man. The man has to handle it for a whole nine months. Your wife will be crying today, swelling tomorrow, insulting you today. She wants to eat this today. She wants to eat that tomorrow. First of all, you handle that by yourself. Then when the time comes to give birth, and the man has to figure out again how for you to go to the hospital. And sometimes they want you to forget the hospital back. Stupid man, foolish man, everything. You will carry it, go to the hospital. Then only two of you guys again. Then the guy again. When you go to the hospital, he will be receiving abuse. You are the one that did this to me. You imprinted me, you foolish man. The guy will enjoy everything. Then you guys will get a bundle of joy. You bring it home. It's only both of you again. No help, no maids, no nanny. And a lot of women go crazy after giving birth. You can have the most wonderful woman on earth. But all those things is enough to make somebody go crazy. And on top of that, you'll be thinking about how your maternity leave is not going to be long enough. Very soon you have to go back to work. Or maybe if you need longer time, you're going to start looking at you like this. Hmm. You have to go back to work because things are beginning to be too tight here. You need to go back to work. You'll be feeling this excessive pressure. Sometimes you have not recovered well. Either from your C-section, you have had some bruises down there, some wounds. You have not recovered well, but you cannot tell your husband because you have to go back to work because money has to be made. Rent, mortgages, they have to be paid. Car payments have to be paid. Now there's a new baby, there's a new addition. Things need to be handled. You have to get back to work. So, you know, too much demand on one gender. And there are some men that are not considerate. That's why their marriages don't last. You want a woman to be taking care of your newborn baby. You want her to cook for you. You want her to clean up. You want her to take care of your emotions. You want her to take care of your family issues again if some things arise. You want her to make money. Come on. It's a lot. And you're in the house again. You cannot help her with anything. Taking out the garbage is an issue. Washing dishes is an issue. Changing the child's diaper is an issue. Even there are some men say, baby, please, can you please bring me uh, something from over there? Oh, I want your maid. I want your this. Because some of you guys are used to your waist back home. And you carry them and you come with them over here. No, you cannot do that. I brought here. If you put everything on your woman, trust me, over the years, she's going to get exhausted. And she's going to be like, you know what? I'm better off being by myself. What's the point of having this guy? He's not helping me with anything. I'm taking care of everything. What's the point of me having him? Let me just get rid of him. So that it's going to remove some burden on me. And I can be free with my kids and take care of them and move on. That is why everybody needs to play that role. And as you're playing your role, you always have to also extend yourself and do something more don't just say and eh, because i'm a man the master can do for her is maybe go grocery shopping no 
extend yourself because over here you don't have help abroad you don't have help and when you see something you can help with don't wait for her to ask you washing dishes there's nothing wrong with you washing dishes when you were single you're washing dishes why were you not having pride and ego when you came to wash your dishes wash your dishes if you need to sweep the house sweep if you need to wash the bathtub wash the bathtub so many even they don't even want to take out the garbage for somebody like me my husband is going to be the one in charge of the garbage i'm not going to be doing the garbage there's no freaking way my husband will be in charge of the garbage there are some men that the garbage is piling up piling up piling up they're just looking at it they're waiting for the woman to clean do everything then carry the garbage again and head out like come on extend yourself a little bit as long as you have the energy just do it there is nothing wrong there just do it and women too when it comes to your husbands so women can be too demanding like i said never satisfied when your husband will get a job today Maybe his salary is uh, eighty thousand dollars. You'll be celebrating with him. <laughs> After a while now, eh, eighty thousand is enough anymore, and everything. And eh, Rebecca's husband, eh, he got a side hustle and everything. How about you get a side hustle too? How about you start doing Uber and everything? And the money is not enough. You are just stressing the man, stressing, never satisfied, never content. Please, ladies, I know yeah, in Africa the teachers, the man is supposed to be the provider and everything, but men too. They have emotions. Mental, mentally, they burn out. It's not because you see them every time, they don't voice it out, they don't cry and everything, they don't throw tantrums. But men go through a lot. That's why you see a lot of men nowadays, instead of talking, they just go and do what they have to do. No. Be content with what your man brings to the table. Whatever you have, manage it. Do what you can do with it. Don't try to overextend him, to overdo things, no. He's not a robot. If he goes and work eight hours a day and he feels like it's enough for him, it's enough for him. Because if you feel like eight hours a day is enough for you, it should be enough for him too. He's a human being. If he wants to go and take a side hustle, let it be his own decision. Let him not be like every day you're stressing him out. Let him finish work at 5 p.m. Then straight from there, go for Uber and come back home at midnight to be up again the next morning at 5.30 a.m. No. Let him do things the way he wants to do things. If a man maybe is working minimal jobs and everything, it's only doing one minimal job, and maybe like bi weekly he's making like, let's say, less than $1,000. Okay, now you can push him and be like, this is not enough. Can't take this. You need to make more. Or let's say maybe you, the woman, you're making way more money than him and everything, and you see him just chilling, not doing anything, then you can face him and be like, no, you need to like, you need to push him to do more. We don't have a man that is actually trying, that went to school, got a degree, has a normal career with a good pay but you keep forcing him to go and work three jobs and everything no if you like i said because us women we are very good at that we are very good at saying ah, this work is exhausting me oh baby i'm so tired and everything men can very understanding at times you even be like i need a break i don't want to work for certain season you'll be like stay at home or sometimes even when your maternity leave is over you'll be like baby i'm not ready to go to work yet you will carry on the shoulder and carry you along but for a man you just feel like no even when he's sick, he has to go to work. You, you'll be calling off work every day. And you will not complain. You'll be like, baby, I ah, have a headache today. Okay, rest. Your stomach is hurting you today. Okay, rest. But you, let the man just wake up and say, ah, baby, can I just take this Friday off? Can I just take this one? Hey, lazy man. Don't be like that. There are no machines. Don't be like that. The way you don't like certain things, that's the same way a man to man don't like it. So don't be like that, okay? That is one of the reasons why marriages too are failing. Too much demands on each gender. You need to be very careful with that. Another reason is this. <laughs> a lot of weddings nowadays are target-based weddings. That's what I mean nowadays. I don't even like going to weddings anymore. Some people are targeted, but they don't know they're targeted. You are there making vows and everything. You think that you are together in this. Not knowing that. That union is a target, it's a contract. And even though you guys are two in that marriage, there is only one person that is aware of that contract that you guys signed. Like I said, a lot of you guys, your partners chose you for a reason. There are some people that, especially for my girls, there are some girls that were tired of living at home. Maybe their parents are always nagging, annoying them. Their parents don't have money, poverty, they are suffering. So they just say, you know what? Let me just go and marry this guy. 
And there are also some people, especially abroad here. Yeah. There are some people that they get married just because they are tired of paying rent. They are tired of handling responsibilities by themselves. So they say, you know what, it's time for me to get married. So that they can split bills half-half. But they're not getting married because they love you, because they care for you. No, it's a target. So people get married because they're tired of living alone. They're tired of the single life, coming home and just seeing the four walls. They have no one to talk to. So they just rush into marriage. That is the only reason why they're getting married. They're basically empty on the inside. It doesn't mean they love you. But they just want somebody to be chatting with. And they just want somebody to be entering the place once in a while. Because as we all know, abroad here, it's not very easy to be getting somebody to be hitting up every night. So some people, when they stay one year, ha, they say that maybe they have only got the chance twice to do that thing. They are like, okay, it's time for marriage. So they're just married because they feel like when they're going to have in the house, they're going to have steady knocking. And you know, there is something else that falls under this target thing. There are a lot of people out there, especially nowadays, after this pandemic, you will have to be very, very careful. There are a lot of vultures out there, and it's not a joke. And what I mean by that is this. There are a lot of people out there nowadays. Back then, they used to be like, oh, school is not for me and everything. I'll just work mini jobs. I don't do anything with myself and everything. Mini jobs will be fine. But now, after the pandemic, they've gotten to realize that, damn, there are no jobs. I have to go back to school. But now, some of them are stuck. They no longer live with their parents life has become so expensive they can't afford to pay rent and everything by themselves so what they do is that they target people either male or females they target people and when you fall in their traps thinking that they love you they don't love you some of them are just using you as a bridge to embedder themselves in better their lives so what they'll do is that they'll be like you know what five years this person is a nurse i'm going to target this lady this guy is an engineer. I'm going to target this guy. I'm going to be with him for five years because my program that I want to do is five years. So they'll tell you they're in love and everything. They will do everything to be correct with you. Until you get to the stage of marrying them, they will be with you. Then they will use you and cross that education bridge. The only reason why they were with you is because you already have a career. You are able to pay rent by yourself, feed them, clothe them, and give them that peace of mind to be able to go to school without stressing about responsibilities and bills. So what I'm going to do is that for those five years, they are going to be the angels of, I don't even know, they're going to be the best, they're going to be on their best behavior to be able to get to that goal. And now when they get to that goal, they will tell you, I'm no longer in love with you. This is not what I wanted for myself. This is not what I signed up for and everything. And they will leave you and go. And some of you even, you'll find yourself paying their student loans. Because a lot of Africans and black people in general are scared of debt. Some of you guys will be like, you know what? I have savings. Please, you're not going to take any student loan. I'll just use the money that I have, pay for your studies, how much is it going to be? Maybe it's going to be like max $38,000. You'll find yourself paying for their studies to send them to school. Thinking that this person is for you. And at the end of the day, when they start working, everything is going to be fine. And you get to realize that they were just using you. That's another reason why a lot of marriages are not lasting long. Especially abroad here. A lot of people are getting married on target. A lot of you guys are targets out there. So you go and sign for better and for worse. Why? One of you guys has their own plan in their head. So that is why you need to be very, very careful. And always go for somebody that's the same level as you or above you don't go for somebody that's too down below down there because you never know what they're up to and my number four point here is <laughs> procreation the reason why a lot of marriages especially abroad are not lasting long enough is because and it's mainly women that do this a lot of men women just marry you for procreation probably when you met her She's already more than 27 years old, especially for those girls that everything for them is marriage, marriage, marriage. When you meet them, maybe they're already of age when they feel like, oh my God, time is running out, my clock is ticking. You the guy, you meet them. <laughs> you're like, okay, I've dated for two years, not three years, not four years. There's no way she can do me this thing. She loves me. That woman at that particular moment, everything you say, yes, baby. 
yes my love just because she wants to have kids on time maybe she's close to hitting her 30s or she's already in her 30s and she has no time to waste her family is already putting pressure on her and everything and she wants to have children so she will say yes to everything and she's going to be like you know what i will just say yes to him i already have a career which makes me safe the canadian government is already there to assist me in case i become a single mother they might give me housing you know the money they give us every month to be able to assist and everything including my career everything is going to be fine so a lot of you men women just marry for your sperm it might be very disappointing i'm very sorry to say this but a lot of you women see no use of you than your sperm they see you you have a good career and we are very good at screening you have a good career you try to look at family history you don't have a lot of health issues and everything they look at your beauty you're very handsome because most women don't want to have kids with several men so they will just use you you don't want to have three four kids to have their three four kids and when they have those kids what they'll do is that they're not going to leave you right away some of them are married to you for like 12 years that's why sometimes when i see marriages are breaking off 15 years or 12 years after i'm like we all know what's up yes there are some reason people that real bad things did happen and that's the reason why they're no longer together but come on a lot of times you men are used for procreation the woman just gets married to you she will give birth she will not leave you when those kids are like zero to let me say eight twelve because she knows that she needs you they are young and everything they are still very demanding they can't work by themselves they can't go for the school bus by themselves they can't come home you leave the key somewhere for them under the carpet for them to pick up and open the door and get in and keep quiet and play the video games for you to come home later on and everything so what they'll do is that they'll get married to you give birth to other kids and you you'll be thinking that you guys are on the same path but you're not one maybe the first born if you guys have like four kids together when the first one is like 12 and she feels like the first one is 12 the second one is 10 then the third one is like eight then the last one is like six and she feels like the 12 year old is already big enough to make breakfast for them in the morning to give them a shower and everything they can help each other now she dismisses you now she's like you know what hey marriage is not for me i can't do this anymore i can't do that anymore i'm so tired of you you are so annoying my brother she married you only for the sole purpose of procreation so those are the four reasons that i have for now why marriages don't last especially abroad here yeah. number one like i said social media number two too much demand on a particular gender number three target and number four procreation so those are the four reasons why i think marriages don't last these days because everyone is on their own mission you're with somebody but you don't really know who they are you think you're on the same journey at some point the person will be like let me get off the bus i don't want to be on this bus anymore the person will just leave you and go and you're going to be like what the hell is happening here and this social media thing is just making things to be upside down like i said if you're not careful with this social media thing you will never last in anything whether it's a relationship friendship marriage learn how to give minimum time to those things you have better things to do follow the ways of your husbands because a lot of men are not even on social media and even if they are like i said they're only there to be looking at girls talking and everything for a few minutes in and out and everything follow their ways and if you're somebody that chooses to always be on social media make sure you guard your heart and your mind because it's not everything that you see online that is true me when i go to social media i just go through that and i laugh yes i'm not going to say i haven't had moments of weakness that some things got to me and everything yes but the person that i am now too much fake show man like i've seen some people you see online they're acting all lovey dovey always traveling together giving each other gifts always traveling around always doing kissing 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 online but when you get to go to their home life now you don't feel that same energy when you are with them face to face and one thing you always need to remember is this a lot of people in this world are sad on the inside and they use social media to be able to make themselves feel good about that situation 
and you always have to remember that nowadays there's less physical interaction so social media now is the new physical interaction so always have that in mind a lot of people are sad out there and that is the only way they can make themselves feel like somebody they can show whatever they are doing they can make themselves feel good and all that stuff but like i said guard your heart with due diligence be intelligent don't be easy to get carried away be content with what you have for now and keep working on whatever project you're working your partner is not your enemy is not your competitor you guys are in that thing together work on things together and progress and stop unnecessarily torturing each other it's not worth it so those are some of the points that i have for you today all right like i said i'm going to make a part two because i didn't want to make this video too lengthy to bore you guys out all right so this is the first four that i have for you and i'm going to give you guys some more later on if you like this video thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel share the video if you agree with some of the things that i mentioned comment down below if you don't agree also let me know but like i said that is my own perception as to why a lot of marriages are not lasting abroad all right or are not lasting even worldwide in our generation in general all right that is my own point of view so for you you can let me know down below what is your own point of view all right so see you next time for another topic on my channel bye guys